All right, so this video will be a continuation of this video. So if you haven't watched that yet, go ahead and watch that first. In that video, I basically walked you through how to create this collab notebook where we installed some packages and dependencies and we wrote some simple code for text to image using Stable Diffusion. We were able to add height, width, sampling steps, guidance scale, as well as change the model here. But what about adding LoRa's? What about changing the sampler? What about image to image? What about outputting more than one image? We're gonna cover all of that today. So let's jump right in. First of all, I'm going to create a copy of this notebook and let's call that Stable Diffusion 2. All right, so I'm gonna to connect to a runtime first. Make sure you have T4 here. If you don't, click this down arrow and then change runtime type. Make sure T4 GPU is selected. So I'm gonna click connect, give this a few seconds to connect. And then once you see the screen check mark, then we can start running the code. So I'm gonna run this first cell, which installs all these packages. Again, if you're new to Colab, you need to run this every time. Once you see this green check mark, we can move on to the next cell. This is what we have from last time. Let's add more functions to this. How do we add LoRa's to our text to image? So if you go back to the diffusers documentation, you can see that you can use this function called load LoRa weights, and then you simply add in the path of your LoRa. So let's actually do this. So what I'm gonna do is set a variable called LoRa path, which we will define later. And then we are going to put this path into the pipeline using load LoRa weights. So it's going to be pipe because we defined this as pipe, whereas they defined it as pipeline here. So they're gonna use pipeline.load LoRa weights, but we are going to use pipe dot load LoRa weights. And then whereas they added the LoRa path directly into here, we can just put LoRa path, which we have to find up here. So let's go search for a LoRa. Again, a good place to look for LoRa's and checkpoints is Civit AI. So if you go to filters and you select LoRa only, you can see all these results. So let's go for a celebrity and let's do the rock. So what you can do is just download this to your computer first. So you can see I've downloaded it here. It's called the rock v3 dot safe tensors. And then next sign up or log in to hugging face. It's completely free to do so. And then hover over your icon at the top here and then click new model. We can call this whatever we want, but let's call this the rock and then click create model. Make sure this is public so you can actually access this from your collab notebook. Once that's done, in the files and versions tab, click add file and then upload files. And then we can drag and drop the LoRa that we just downloaded. So you can see it's loaded here. We can leave all these settings as is and then just click commit changes to main. So this LoRa is around like 113 megabytes. So it would take a few seconds to upload. All right, now that that is done, all you need to do is copy this path or click this copy icon here. And going back to our notebook, we simply paste the path here. All right, one final step is what about LoRa weights? Because usually like when you use LoRa's, you do like LoRa and then the name of the LoRa and then you add a weight like 0.8. So this, this number dictates the importance of the LoRa. How much of the LoRa do you wanna add to your image? So how do we do that here? So if we look back at the documentation, it says that you can adjust the merging ratio of a LoRa using this parameter, cross attention quargs. And this parameter is set down here. So we're just gonna simply copy and paste this and add it to our pipeline down here. And then make sure to add a comma here so that it separates everything. And then we want to edit this number, right? So this is the LoRa weight or the LoRa importance. So let's actually just name this first to LoRa weight, and then we can add LoRa weight in here. This is just for better organization. So I wanna add all the things that we can vary, all the settings in here so we can easily pinpoint what to edit. So I'm gonna add LoRa weight and then set this to like 0.7. All right, so we are almost done. We just need to change the prompt now to the rock. So if you go back to the LoRa, usually there are trigger words that you need to type in your prompt in order to trigger the LoRa. So in this case, it's 
the rock with a three and a zero. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in our prompt here. And then let's just add some more keywords. So let's add the rock Dwayne Johnson portrait. All right, so just to quickly walk you through what this all means, we create a stable diffusion pipeline and we name it pipe. And then this is the checkpoint or model that our pipeline will use. This defines the style of your image. So will it be like realistic or anime or Disney Pixar style, etc. We set this pipeline to use CUDA because we are using a GPU here. And then we set the safety checker to none. So you won't get a blank image if you generate NSFW images. We covered all of this last time. So the new addition here is we are setting a new variable called lower path which is the LoRa that we just uploaded to our hugging face. Then we are going to set this LoRa into this pipeline that we defined up here. And then all the way down here, we are going to run this pipeline. And then one additional setting that we added is the LoRa weight. So how much of the LoRa do we want to add? And in this case, we want to set the importance to 0.7. So we added this up here. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see if this works. If you run this from the start, it's going to have to load the checkpoint first, so it might take a bit longer. All right, you can see it's loading the LoRa now. And there we go. Here is a portrait of the rock. Simple as that. One thing I should do is I want to separate this code so that it doesn't load the checkpoint every time because this is going to run all of this, which would take a while. So just to make it slightly faster and more efficient, I wanna like separate blocks of code based on their function. So actually I'm going to add a new code section and then paste all of this here. So basically we only run this one time. We don't need to load everything again, right? And then we can just focus on the image generation down here. So this is just for better organization. All right, so we covered how to add LoRa's to diffusers. What about changing the sampler? So I checked out this thread. How can we add DPM++ to Mkeras in diffusers? And this is actually the sampler that I want to use because it's the best balance between speed and quality. If you're looking for speed, I think like Uller works best. If you're looking for the best quality, then SDE Keras would be great. But this is just a, a, the best blend of both speed and quality. So is this possible? Yes, it is. This is what you need. So let's look at the documentation. So you can see that for diffusers, you can add all these different sampling methods or schedulers. And how you add it is like this. So I'm just gonna copy this and add it to our code. So from diffusers, import the scheduler, and then I'm going to copy this and then add it over here. Now we named this pipe up here instead of pipeline. So I'm gonna change this to pipe. All right, now going back to the thread, let's see which one is the DPM++ to Mkeras. So it looks like it's this one, the DPM solver multi-step scheduler. So I just need to copy this and then replace this DDIM with this one. And a nice trick which you can do in Colab and also VS Code is if you click Control D, you can select the next instance of this word and then you can multi-edit. So you can see when I pasted in this new scheduler here, it also edited this one down here. So that's a neat trick that you can do to speed up your coding. And that's all you need to do to change the sampling method of your pipeline. There are all these other ones that you can choose from, so feel free to play around with it to get the one that works best for you. All right, so we're gonna click play on this cell again. And once you see the green check mark, we can run this. All right, perfect. And then let's try a different prompt now. So if you don't want to use Alora, you can just change the Alora weight to zero here. Also get rid of the trigger word. So let's just say we want to output a castle in the forest. You can also comment these out by typing control and slash. So you can see this adds a number sign at the start of each line. And this means that these lines of code will not run when I run this cell. All right, perfect. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, UPix. If you're feeling overwhelmed with mid-journey or stable diffusion, you don't want to worry about prompting or learning all these different settings, well, UPix has made it dead easy for you to generate high-quality, realistic images of yourself or anyone else in just one click. It works on desktop as well as on your phone. You don't need to install any apps or anything, it just works straight from your internet browser. Simply select a template, 
and then upload your photo, and then click Create. It's as easy as that. And look how realistic the results are. There's many templates for you to choose from and more to come, so check it out at upix.app. So we covered LoRa's, we covered changing the sampling method. What if you want to output more than one image? So going back to the documentation, if you expand all the parameters that it takes in, you can see that there is this parameter here, number of images per prompt. And that's all we need to change the number of images that it outputs. So I'm gonna add this here. And then let's call this num images. And then I'm gonna add num images in here. So let's say I want this to output three images. We do need to change a few more things here. So for non-tech folks out there, this could get a bit technical, but what this is doing is it's getting images, which is a list of items. And right now we are only getting the first item here. So we don't want that. We want to get rid of this so that we get the full list of items, which we will name images. All right, so how do we actually display all the images in this image list? Well, I just asked ChatGPT and I'm gonna paste in the code here. So here's a really oversimplified explanation of this, but basically we are saying for each image in the number of images that we defined, display that image. And if you have no idea what this means, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna share this code with you. So you don't need to write this all out yourself, but basically adding this snippet of code and then adding number of images per prompt would allow you to specify how many images you would like to output. So let's say we did three here. Let's run this again and it should output three images. All right, so we do have three images. Here's one, two, and three. Awesome, and again, to save it, all you need to do is right click and then save image. All right, final step, so we covered text to image. What about image to image? So again, going back to the documentation, here's how we do image to image. So it gives you an example of all the things you need to import, all the dependencies, and then how to run the pipeline. So actually, let me rename this to text to image, which is what this notebook is about. And then I'm going to copy this and call it image to image. So I'm going to connect to the T4 GPU runtime and then run this again. So while this is installing all the packages, we can move on to edit this cell. So I can just simply copy all of this here. So import this package, import this package, etc., etc. From diffusers, import this. And then instead of stable diffusion pipeline, we just need to use imaged image pipeline. So I'll paste this in here. Oh, looks like I deleted this by accident. So let me add this back in. All right, so let's run this cell now. And again, I'm gonna share this notebook with you in the description below, but I'm just showing you like how I would go into the documentation and just look for what I need and then copy the code to my notebook. Like this is my process for finding out how to do something as a non-technical guy. And I hope that by showing you, this also helps you learn how to read and analyze documentation and add it to your code to do whatever you want. All right, so we see a green check mark here. Next step is to add in an image. So there are two ways to add an image here. If you have a URL, you can just add it here like this. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in here and let's find an image. Let's go for this image. So I'm gonna copy the URL of this and then paste it in here. And let's resize this to 768 by 768. You don't have to resize it, but usually this is to make the height and the width divisible by eight. And that should cover uploading a base image from a URL. So let's describe this a bit more. So it's a girl with, a, with brown hair and a ponytail, and she has a dragon in the background. So let's, let's write that in the prompt. And then height and width, let's set the width to 800. It's important to keep the same aspect ratio as your base image, which is in our case, a square. So let's make this 800 by 800. And then one more step here, because this is image to image, we also need to add a setting here, which is denoising strength. So this is how much of this base image do we want to follow? And you can see from this example code here, it's defined by this variable called strength. So I'm gonna add strength down here and let's call this denoising strength and let's define denoising strength up here. So I'm gonna set this to like 0.6 number of images. I'll set this to two and then let's run this first and see what we get. 
Oh, one more thing I forgot to add is the initial image. So image equals init image. And init image is what we defined up here. So let's click play again, and this should work. Awesome, look at that. You can see the results aren't great, so we can tweak the settings of like denoising strength, etc., etc. but you can see that it is basing your new image from the original spirited away image. Let's actually make this better. So I'm gonna set the denoising strength to 0.3. Let's see if this works better. All right, well, this is slightly closer to the original image, but you get the point. You can tweak the settings around to get the results that you want. Now, one final thing. Let's say you don't want to get an image from a URL. What if you have an image on your computer? So I'm going to comment this section out. And again, to comment it, simply click Control and then Slash. And I'm going to save this image to my computer. As you can see here, I've called it spiritedaway.jpg and then Back in our Colab notebook, we expand this folder icon, and then we drag and drop our image into here. And you can see that it's loaded into here now. So next, we just need to define the initial image as this image. So let's first set a variable called image path, which we can set equal to this. So we'll just right click on this and then copy path, and then paste it in here. And then the next step is just init image, and then image open, and then open this path. And this should be the same thing. So let's click run again and see if this works. All right, perfect. So same result. So this is just if you have an image on your computer, you can just upload it to the folder here and then use it with image.open. So there you go. We covered how to add LoRa's, how to change the sampler, how to output multiple images, and how to do image to image. Again, I'm going to paste both text to image and image to image notebooks in the description below so you don't have to type all this code out yourself. However, I would highly recommend that you go through the diffusers documentation because it really helps you learn how to solve something by yourself. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, remember to just gently touch that subscribe button. You don't need to like smash or destroy it. Just gently touch it and stay tuned for more content. Also, we built a site where you can search for all the AI tools out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.